What about making your sound better? Hi there guys, Radet Roman in cooperation with WA Production is speaking. In this tutorial I want to talk about comparison of FL Studio and Ableton because a lot of you guys has requested to me to do you know this type of uh, tutorial video maybe. So yeah, uh, as you probably know I am a native FL Studio user. You know I am working in FL Studio for like 8 to 10 years, not exactly sure how much. And I really do love this uh, this door, you know. Um, recently, I bought, or not recently, like half a year ago, I bought also Ableton because I really do like those um, plugins they are offering. You know, this multiband compressor is compressor is, you know, epic. Uh, also, their EQ and saturators are great. But, uh, you know, just take the whole video just as, as my opinion, you know, there are plenty of people that won't agree with me. But, uh, in my opinion, creating something in Ableton is just, you know, too hard and time consuming, th time consu time consuming thing. If you are a beginner, then you in my opinion, you, you just need to go to FL Studio because it offers you like so much bigger ways, you know, and possibilities to create sound. You are not uh, you are not forced to do it only one way. You know, you can do like this type, or you know, this is really an easy project. But you can do some, you know, massive projects that I'm doing. You know, you are not like told where exactly and you know how to do how to do the project how to you know concept it you know also if you have <coughs> two screens which is uh, which i really recommend to all of you guys you know two, two screens are really great and saves you so much time so fl studio is, is extremely extremely like um two screens friendly plugin because you know you can divide it the screen into this playlist and on the on the on the other screen you will have the whole like pattern thing together with with the samples search tab so that is really great however in the ableton if you if you will um uh, where it is. If you will turn on the second window, which I want because we are rec I'm recording also only on on this on this particular screen, it will split into two windows. But you know, just try it. So it will split. Yeah, you won't see it. But on this screen, you have this live settings, which you actually won't be using at all when you are creating music you don't need a screen you know this one is for live performances or looping or stuff so this one is completely you know boring we i really don't need that one so even though i have two screens i i'm only using the other one because uh everything is happening in there also when you have when you want to write midi in there you will create this uh midi clip and then you have this really funny little tool where, where you can draw the melodies and you just you know you click and nothing happens you need to click to click on b then you need to click b again then you can draw some something i it, i didn't know how you, i was never able to draw a melody in ableton it's so hard and uh yeah, <laughs> I just know, don't know how to work, how it works. But what is a great thing in Ableton, what uh, FL Studio doesn't have, is the possibility of duplicate things, if the possibility of 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 copy and paste things, exactly you know, uh, snapped to to the tempo. And what is also great, and when once you will used to it, it will you know it's a bit harder to work in FL Studio is that uh, 
Ableton is uh, force Ableton is forcing you to like have proper projects, you know, like kicks in really in one clip, claps in the other one, uh, and and so on and so on. So once your your track is finished and you want to bounce, for example, stems, the only thing you need to do is just to click, you know, export, and you will. It will it will select all individual tracks and all stems will be automatically bounced. However, in Ableton, you can do crazy things like this. You know, you, now I have all of my drums in this one, in this um, line, which uh, which I don't need. You know, how I can now bounce it? How I can bounce only kicks now? You know, it's. Uh, it allows you to do things like that, which can actually at the end uh, bring you some extra work, but it worth it, you know, it, it just do for me. So uh, Ableton is, is really a big thing when, uh, when we are talking about internal plugins, when we are talking about advanced producers that are looking maybe for some really you know advanced techniques that FL Studio uh, doesn't allow you to do but uh, let's be honest if you know what you are doing you can simply do it even in FL Studio I, I, I don't have any any specific example right now but uh, if you are using your brain you will be do you will be able to do the same thing you are doing in Ableton in FL Studio because uh, this new FL Studio what's I, I'm not sure 12 yeah 12 is just uh, just so advanced you know it has so many new features that I uh, I was you know missing in it in the in the FL Studio 11 now it nearly it has nearly all of what I was looking for and what Ableton had, but FL Studio didn't. So now uh, those you know guys from Native Instruments fix it, and or not Native Instruments, Imagine Line, sorry. <laughs> and yeah, you know, it's all is just super easy to use. Uh, you know, intuitive things. Uh, I saw a lot of tutorials. You know, I, I was thinking like, man, when you are working in FL Studio, you simply can't create tracks that you hear in spinning. And yeah, you do. You probably know that, you know, Dyro, Martin Garrix, uh, who else? Uh, yeah, Jay Hardway and a lot of and a lot of other producers are using. Maybe also Henry Fong. I'm not sure about Tonk. Peter Tonk, Henry Fonk, one of those guys. <laughs> I'm not sure about it, but just plenty of guys are using FL Studio. Even, even some really hardcore dubstep and drum and bass producers such as Spore. Uh, his name is Feed Me now, I think. He's one of the best sound designer I know, and he is working in FL Studio. I was really surprised when I saw it. So this is the example of people that are working here and that are able to create some crazy stuff so uh, don't listen to people that are telling that FL Studio is a is a door for beginners that you can do things which are you able to do in Ableton because that's not true also those plugins I was mentioning in Ableton. I spent quite a lot of time to uh, find proper plugins for FL Studio because, to be honest, I really don't like those native Imagine Line plugins, except of uh, some stereo imaging maybe. But when you uh, when you will, you know, take a closer look at, at some other third-party plugins such as Waves, uh, which are offering really, you know, awesome. Awesome things. Also, recently I discovered these T-Rex plugins, which are also great. So if you find those, uh, you it will it will be enough for you. You know, uh, they are nearly the same quality as those in in Ableton. 
uh, this multiband dynamics is really rare, but it can be replaced with, for example, C6 plugin by Waves or this uh, this, this multiband dynamics uh, quad comp by T-Rex, which is also great. You know, this uh, EQ8 can be easily switched with Fob filter 2. It works nearly the same. Um, the Saturn can be re replaced by Fob filter saturator. Um, the reverb is great, but there are like thousands of third-party plugins. So if you will spend some time finding plugins that fit your production the best, uh, I bet you will find those plugins you want and you won't need the Ableton ones. Once again, you know, Ableton is great, but as I am an FL Studio user and I, I was decided to start working in Ableton, I was a bit uh, mm, surprised that it's not that big deal as I thought it is. Uh, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm still mixing from time to time in Ableton, but uh, I'm 100%, uh, I'm 100%, hmm positive about using FL Studio because uh, once again this FL Studio 12 update is just what is just contains everything what you need to have you know from this track button uh, to possibility of dragging and dropping multi multiple uh, multiple files in the uh, to, you know, to this playlist and just a bunch of other things that I'm even not using, those live things that you can use uh, when you connect your your FL Studio with an MPC, MPC player or whatever. But yeah, so when I compare FL Studio and Ableton, uh, long story short, short uh, FL Studio wins so much, you know, it just crashes Ableton in my in my eyes because uh, I agree that maybe earlier Ableton was uh, a bit better you know had some better uh, ways of making things uh, just producing things but now FL Studio did major step forward and you know went uh, and is at least on the same level as Ableton when you are looking at you know possibility of creating tracks but if you take a look at the whole interface of Ableton you just can't disagree that uh, FL Studio is so much easier to use and so much more user-friendly intuitive and just offers so much more possibilities to beginners and even more advanced because you can do some really messy stuff in there and which you cannot do in Ableton. So uh, I'm sorry this tutorial was just about speaking. You know, I will, I will play you this uh, drop just for, just so you will hear some music also. <laughs> This is a construction kit from What About uh, Tropical House Essentials Volume Two, where I used, uh, you know, some classical, some classic things I'm I'm, I'm always using. So uh, maybe in the next tutorial. <laughs> so thank you for watching. If you agree with me, just write me in comments. If you don't agree with me, you can also write me write us a comment and say and say us what with what you don't agree and what do you think is Ableton better in and yeah thank you for watching have a nice day don't forget to comment subscribe or like and produce more music because it's fun bye <laughs>